light it is. I think it's about uh, seven o'clock at night. It uh, never. This is the 19th of June, and uh, it doesn't get dark now. All right, got a neat-looking creek bed here, All ice covered. And Starting the ascent um, up Attigan Pass. Like a pretty good climb up through here. We're at about 2,600 feet. I think we got about another 3,000 to go. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is Attigan Pass. It looks like we're uh, way above Timberline, like in Colorado, but uh, currently we're about 3,500 feet. Attigan Pass. We're only at 4,600 feet, but. Uh, Definitely above uh, Timberline up here. And it's definitely a steep coming down this side as it was uh, going up the other. A little snow still. Yes, I do have my heated grips on. They're feeling mighty nice. Another 20 miles from North Dakota. You guys have a good one. Road crew, granite construction. Those guys are all over. It's June the 19th on Man Scout trip, 2011, and we've uh, we're on the a lot of people call the Hall Road. Or, uh, is up to uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, Alaska, and we've just went over Anakin Pass, which is just was out between them mountains out through there somewhere. And we're setting up camp about 100, we're 150 miles short of Dead Horse. And uh, we're setting up camp for the night. Can't remember the name of this campground. Uh, kind of the, I say we're setting up camp for the night, but it actually doesn't get dark at all. I'll, I'll tell you what, if it gets late at night, I'll turn on my camera. Yeah, we got a snout house here and uh, we've got some bear proof uh, containers right there. I was talking to uh, somebody earlier about this area right here. They said there's no black bears out here at all. There you can see the Alaska pipeline over there. But there's grizzlies out here. There's no black bears this far, this far north. And the fact is there's a grizzly mama that uh, that frequents this area right here, but she's, she's shies away from people. She's got a couple cubs. Well, I'm all cozied up in my tent here. They're still at the campground. And, uh, <laughs> we're not showing too much here. <laughs> anyway, I'm in my, uh, today's Father's Day. And, uh, wish my son was with me. We're here 150 miles south of Dead Horse, Alaska, sleeping in a tent on the cold ground. This is exactly where my sons really don't want to be. <laughs> anyway, my son bought, bought me this uh, for Father's Day. He gave me this Marmot uh, down sleeping bag, zero degree down sleeping bag. 
thought that was pretty cool. I think he gave me a whole bunch of stuff. Now I think about it. Anyway, I'm all closed up in my tent. And here, you know, we're way up north here. And uh, I'm trying to find my watch. Here it is. Okay, it's saying 107. That's three hours off. It's actually 1007 here where I'm at. Three time zones away from home. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it is like noon outside it's it just don't get dark up here i think there's gonna be a couple hours of just real like dusk maybe and that's that's just about it anyway i've got my protection on there's a couple grizzlies uh in this area out here they said there's no black bears up here but i got my my counter assault bear deterrent all cocked and ready here. I got my Gerber LMF2. Hit a bear in the end of the nose with that, and I'm telling you, you'll get his attention quick. You asleep, Scott? No. Uh, he's, he's a party pooper, I tell you. Got my Gatorade. I got to drink the rest of that so I'll have something piss in tonight because I ain't going outside of that grill. <laughs> Anyway, me and Scott are having time of a lifetime. Really are. So, we've had a long day today. We rode from Fairbanks to here on the, on the Hall Road. And uh, we're going to have to throw something over our head so we'll think it's dark and go to sleep. Good night. Kind of interesting, this pipeline is. Uh the oil comes out of the ground at like 165 to 180 degrees and uh, they actually got it insulated so that it doesn't, uh, or it goes underground, it doesn't uh, interrupt the permafrost and thaw it out. But it's pretty neat, by, by the time it gets to Valdez, 800 and some miles away, it's only dropped down to I think it's 115 degrees temperature. Dead horse. Buildings around. Pretty windswept place. It's got some kind of a river going on there. Right, we'll head on here and get some fuel. Fueling station and find us a restaurant. Well, we're headed back south again. This is the uh, the Brooks Range. We're on the, the north slope here, but uh, we're headed south, looking at the Brooks Range. It's Adigan Pass is there ahead of us. Great ride up north here, the north slope. Pretty desolate area, that's for sure. We're on the Den Denali Highway, and uh, there's a really great basin out there. 
glaciers coming down and hoping to see a bear down through here. I haven't yet. Yeah, this uh, Denali Highway is from uh, Cantwell, Alaska over to Paxson, Alaska. It's kind of riding what they call the Denali Highway, which is a dirt road uh, heading east from uh, uh, Denali National Park. And uh, we're in the middle of grizzly country. And, and I know, I'm almost saying this is my favorite road that I've ridden on on this whole trip. Top of the world maybe being my, my, my top. And this one is... And there's a glacier right there. I'll zoom in on it. Yeah, that's great up here. Uh, I'm really liking this this uh, basin. I'm trying to get out of the here. Liking this basin down in here. And uh, man, ain't that neat out there? Oh man, that is neat. Wouldn't it be neat to? Go down in there and camp down in there. Might be about three, four scared to death with all the grizzlies around here. Cause we done seen the biggest pile of grizzly crap we have ever seen, and it was smoking. It was so fresh. We're still on the uh, Denali Road, going east towards Paxson on the Denali River uh, Road, and uh, this is a Sitna River. Yeah, it's got a really neat kind of wooden bridge right here. Well, Scott, I'll be coming around the corner here in a minute. Kind of spectacular. Taking things in. He do a little filming too. Takes twelve horsepower to ride around the world. The rest is wheel spin. Beautiful scenery up here. We're back in, uh, let's see, this is Alaska Highway in uh, Yukon Territory. We're approximately uh, 50 miles. Uh, West Kane uh, Junction. We're about 145 miles west of Whitehorse, Yukon. This is camp at uh, Haines Junction, Alaska. Oh, we ain't Alaska no more. We are in the Yukon. Hi there. And I will demonstrate the use of 
fire starting techniques. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is the Gerber LMF2. You hit a bear in the nose with that, and I'm telling you, you ain't gonna have no trouble out in the rest of the night. It's good for nasty nose hairs, for shaving. You can lash it through these little holes here and make a spear out of it. You can chop wood with it. You can slice your meat off your freshly cut salmon and kill fly, kill mosquitoes with it. Well, it's recommended to have the nine inch blade around here for, for that though. Anyway, dingle weeds is over setting up his tent. I'm tending to way more important matters. That's getting a fire going so the bears don't eat us tonight. I'll show you master techniques of chopping wood here with the combination Gruber axe and saw. Anyway, as you can see, I could take this 14 inch diameter log right here and with one chop, lap. We've got firewood. The Gerber 16 inch axe. Look, oh, got that mosquito. <laughs> well, Scott's over there still uh, pussyfooting around, putting up a tent. I've had to do everything over here. <laughs> I've had to start the fire. Shoo away a, shoo away a, a bear. Who's this black bear? And now I've been slaving over a hot stove. He's over blowing up his tent. He's just not much of an outdoorsman. Hey Scott, you want uh, you want beef stew, or I've got some uh, beef stew. What do you have? You want the beef stew? Okay. Oh, we're good to go. Check this meal out here. I've cut carrots and beef and corn and peas. I even remember to take the oxygen numbers over out. These are actually quite tasty. He's still over there screwing around the tent. He's on with us. Tent's chased all the skiers away.